Hey everyone, I'm Rick. And I'm Chris with Techspin. How good is your current mouse? Upgrading your gaming or even regular mouse is a big thing for most people. After all, it is the main method of getting around in Windows. That's true. So we've been testing out a cool mouse from HyperX. It's the Pulsefire Core. And it's also included sometimes on Amazon as a bundle with the Alloy Core RGB keyboard we just reviewed. And if you decide to grab one through our affiliate links below, it does help us out a bit here. So thanks for your support. At TechSpin, we bring you honest testing and opinions about new tech. So we'll put the Pulsefire Core through the paces and see if it's worth your money. And just a reminder, if you want to keep up with our releases, you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at TechSpin Review. So let's get to it. We haven't reviewed any mice in a while, so I'm pretty excited about this one. From the sleek lines of the mouse to the white packaging, it looks pretty slick, but we need to find out, does it perform? The HyperX Pulsefire Core is an entry-level gaming mouse with RGB accents and braided cable. Retailing for about 30 US dollars, 25 pounds, 40 Canadian rubles, or 990 NT here in Taiwan, with a two-year warranty. We'll throw the link up for the HyperX Alloy Core RGB gaming keyboard uh, here. They occasionally bundle with it on Amazon. Feel free to check that link and come on back for the rest of this review when you're done. The symmetrical design of the Pulsefire Core has a top coated with a nice matte paint, which feels great and provides decent grip. Top buttons provide a tactile click with nominal pressure. And the 1000 Hz polling rate is performed by a Pixar 3327, which is a great sensor, generations after the 3320 and 3325, bringing near high-end performance to the entry-level segment. Measuring 120 millimeters long by 64 wide and 42 mils high, it's suited for claw or palm grip with medium to larger hands. And as I have larger hands, I find it fits really nicely. The liftoff distance is roughly two millimeters from the pad until it loses tracking. The Pixart 3327 tracks 6200 DPI or dots per inch and handles 220 IPS or inches per second, which converts to just over 5.5 meters a second and up to 30 G, yes, G-force. Plenty fast for gaming. When gaming mice started getting benchmarked, these values represented the upper limit when the sensors lose the ability to track movement properly. Now they're pretty much beyond what a normal human could do. If you've gamed with an old mouse, then you'll know that you hit that limit when you're moving it quickly side to side, actually move the cursor less than moving it slowly the same amount of distance. Perfect control speed is the value at which the mouse would appear to spin out in game, but we absolutely could not reach that pulse fire's limit. So very good. The scroll wheel area is glossy, and the wheel has a rubber outer ring, which provides super silent scrolling. The wheel click is straight down only, and is pretty quiet too. DPI buttons are also here with similar click characteristics. Side buttons are on the left only, and are a glossy plastic with a higher pitched click, but with the same amount of pressure. They are positioned well and fit my hand shape naturally and are both easy to reach. The opposite side has the same wavy textured grooving which does a decent job of providing grip. Though if you get moist hands while gaming, it may be a little slippery. Or you could see a doctor about that. Conversely, wash your hands before gaming and grab a few dollar towels from Ikea and you should be good to go. The bottom has some great large skates which really glide across mouse pads. And on to build quality, and we were not disappointed here, it's super solid. It's actually really surprising how extremely well put together this mouse is. Uh, we've been using it for several months and not a creak or sound other than buttons. Super stiff with no flex or rattling, everything's machined perfectly. Buttons stay in place with zero play, and it's quite surprising for such a budget-oriented gaming mouse. Where is this guy? Weighing in at 93 grams with the cable tug included, the mouse has good balance and distributed weight. It's lightweight, but almost into our self-defined middleweight category, which we call 95 to 110 grams, uh, and heavyweight would be 110 grams and more. Competitive pro gamers often choose lighter mice, and from long play sessions, I can confirm that heavy mice tire out your hand quicker than light ones. 
That being said, I've played over six hours a time on Borderlands 3 without any fatigue with this mouse. Response for clicks is nice and fast. HyperX is using gaming grade switches rated for around 20 million clicks. Higher tier expensive pro gaming mice may be marginally faster, shaving off two to four milliseconds, but with milliseconds, we're talking about thousands of a second. Gaming, I found the Pulse Fire Core to be a very competent mouse, and considering this one comes in at just under 30 bucks, it's pretty amazing nonetheless. This is all controlled with HyperX's Ingenuity software. It's a Microsoft Store download of 72 megs, which downloaded and installed quickly. It recognized the Pulsefire core and allows you to change the values and colors of each DPI level down to 200 or anywhere in between. Changing DPI up or down sends Windows messages informing you of the new value, but they stack and display slowly, probably a Windows messaging issue, but hopefully HyperX can tune this a bit in the future. Polling rate default is the maximum 1000 Hertz, and you can adjust it down if you like to 125, 250, or 500 in software. One good feature of Ingenuity is the ability to reprogram all mouse buttons except left and right to whatever you want, including macros. In the March 2020 beta version we tested, for the main left and right buttons, you could just swap their functions. By clicking the icon picture top right, you get access to profile options which you can assign to games, and the Pulsefire core will automatically switch between them when launched. In addition, the mouse appears to have onboard memory saving settings as I switched PCs and everything stayed the same. And let's talk about the RGB logo. There are four settings, solid color, a breathing mode, color cycle, and a trigger that lights up reacting to button presses. You can really dial in the exact shade you want with a color wheel. There's also an off mode if you need it to go stealth. Now the software is still beta, but something we noticed is the default slow color cycle setting pretty well matches the keyboard. But when you launch Ingenuity beta software, suddenly it goes four times faster. It also remains this speed minimized until you actually exit the software. It's a quirk, but if you set the RGB and exit out completely, it works fine. So hopefully HyperX can fix this in the final software. Please take a moment to like this video. And if you like what you see, then please do subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when I upload new content. So Chris, what did you think about the mouse? So overall, it had a, a really nice click, uh, both the sides and also the wheel as well. It just was very smooth in the clicking and I personally like a mouse where you can feel the click. So that's what I liked about this mouse. Um, how about the, the side buttons? What did you think? Oh yeah, the, the side buttons actually were, uh, were pretty decent too because um, like a lot of competitive gamers may use the side buttons for strafing, running left and right. They were super easy to hit. Um, yeah, the mouse wheel too is uh, very smooth and clicking was smooth as well. I like the fact that they have the DPI switches right on the top there too, which is nice. And a very nice kind of presentation for the overall package. How about the build quality? You could feel the quality of the mouse when you're just holding it. We cannot complain about that. Yeah, it's like solid. And uh, as you saw earlier in the video, there's like a flex test that we did is like, is rock solid, which mm -hmm. is really surprising for like an entry level gaming mouse. Definitely, so definitely. Um, size and shape was uh, decent. Like I have, you know, a little bit larger hands and uh, fits my hands well and um, you tried it for a little bit and how was yeah, it? Yeah, same, fit in my hand really well. I think it it's it's very diverse in where any kind of hand shape or size, it, it just works, it works out really well. Fair enough. And uh, it, had, uh, it has this really nice braided cable, which is good too. Um, very, uh, it's not stiff and it doesn't catch on stuff, so that's great. Mm -hmm. um, how about the, the logo and RGB? Oh yeah, so I, I like this because some mice, you know, uh, some, uh, gaming peripherals have a ton of RGB. This is very kind of subtle and it's simple and uh, pretty well done. And there's uh, controls for it in the software as well. So you can go through the software and change the settings to whatever you like, which is good. Um, using the software was a little challenging. I, I know you, you weren't there for that part, mm -hmm. but uh, um, just the layout of the software, it, it's, it's decent software. It could be fine tuned just a little bit and uh, yeah, overall though, it has controls for the polling rate and DPI settings. You can customize all that, which is nice because if you're a pro gamer, you want to fine tune all your settings to get the, Definitely. the best kills, right? And uh, yeah, for the side grips, um, it's good. Um, it stays in your hand. We've seen silicon grips on higher end models. However, I've had uh, experience where like an actual grip has actually like come off after mm. a couple months of use, so. Definitely. Yeah. Um, final verdict. 
Overall, I, I really like the mouse. Like I said, it, it fits well in my hand. I'm able to control it. The clicking, the, uh, the, mount, the, the scroll is, is very nice. Overall, I, I was pleased with this mouse. And it's, a, it's pretty quiet too, like it's not, it's not like as loud as other mice, which is nice and you still get a good uh, tactile feedback and uh, auditory uh, sense as well when you hear that click. So overall, pretty good. The HyperX Pulsefire Core is an exceptionally well-built gaming mouse with a bunch of customization so that you can tailor your setup for winning. With a quiet mouse wheel and a nice scroll, precise left and right buttons, side buttons that are very well machined, and the PixArt sensor which is responsive, the mouse has everything you need for just 30 bucks. We really like the complete feeling of control and preciseness that the Pulsefire Core provides with all the features it offers. The options for DPI control and polling rate in the software along with RGB, five programmable and two swappable buttons and a braided cord are really amazing coming on an entry-level gaming mouse. And there's onboard memory to save your profile, offering exceptional value for consumers. This mouse delivers all the features gamers are looking for. If you're an e-tournament pro gamer, you might be looking for something a tier or two up just to shave off a millisecond or two. But even as a casual to pretty competitive gamer, this mouse will serve you very well and is a great investment into getting better scores. We always strive to be as objective as possible, and while our testing and conclusion is based on what we saw, you should always go to the store if possible to test mice to see if it will fit your hand and work with your playstyle. That being said, this is a super well-built mouse that's terrific for gaming. So the Pulse Fire Core has all the features you want for gaming at a real steal of a price. HyperX is a winner on their hands, and it's great that you can get a performance mouse like this for so cheap. Woo! This is definitely the top mouse we've tested in this price range, and it still holds its own against more expensive options. We definitely recommend this mouse, and if you want to grab your own, buying through our affiliate links down below does help support us here with no extra cost to you. Yeah. And to keep up with our latest releases, don't forget to give us a quick follow on social media. You can find us at Techspin Review on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter too, as we are going to continue checking out more gaming mice. So what current gaming mouse are you using to get on the leaderboards or are considering buying? Do you have some experience about this or other mice that you want to share? Join the discussion down below. And we're interested to hear what new hardware you want to see reviewed, let us know and we'll try and get to it. If you like this video, please do smash that thumbs up button or let us know how we can improve. If you want to see more videos like this, then please do subscribe for new content and click that bell icon to get notified when we put up a new video. We read and reply to the comments, so if you have a question or we miss something, then please do tell us down below. We really appreciate you watching this far. Thanks for your time, and we'll see you on the next. Bye for now.